Welcome back. Now, up until now, we saw the break keyword that we can use to break out of a loop. And you see here that we're able to loop with a for loop, but with a while loop, as soon as we break, we're done. We've just, well, broken out of the loop. But could we do that in a for loop? Let's find out. Yep, break keyword works in a for loop as well. But there's actually two other things that we can use besides break. One is called continue. And you can see here, again, blue highlighting. If I do continue here and I click run, there you go. We get our looping again. But you're thinking, why, um, why do we need this? Like, it seems completely useless, right? Well, a break, when we use the break statement, it breaks out of the current and closing loop. So when we used a break statement, we broke out of this loop, right? This whole while loop, we just exited it. And same with the for loop, we completely exited it. However, with a continue, what we're saying is, hey, whatever happens when you hit this line, continue on to the top of the enclosing loop. So the current enclosing loop, what is it? It's this for loop. So it's going to go back to the for loop. So that if I do something like print here, so that we get it printed twice, or you know what, let's just move print down here, like that. And then same here, we're going to just print at the bottom after continue. If I click run, nothing gets printed because as soon as it sees continue, it's going to say, okay, I'm going to go back to the loop. And it's going to keep going, keep going, keep going until, well, the loop ends so that we never actually hit line 10 and line four. So that becomes really useful in conditional logic as well. Finally, the third one is called pass. And pass is, well, not very useful. It essentially does nothing. If I click run here, and again, it shows me here, line 10, something's wrong. Well, we have to move print up to the top so that, well, we don't get my list of index of three, which doesn't exist. So again, going back here, if I click run, pass doesn't do absolutely anything. It just essentially passes to the next line. So why is that ever useful? It's very rare that you'll see pass in your code, but pass is a good way to have, let's say a placeholder while you're coding. For example, you wanna loop through the for loop, but we don't know what we wanna do yet in the code. Let's say that here we're still thinking about it. If I do this and I click run, I get an error here because, whoa, whoa, whoa. Expected an indented block because now the for loop or the Python interpreter is looking for the next, like what am I supposed to do with the loop? I'm trying to loop and there's no code for me. So you can add a pass here to at least fill something for the for loop to say, hey, I'm thinking about it. I'm just gonna pass it for now just so you have something so you don't bug me uh, and I'll come back to it. So if I click run, that still works. So pass is one of those placeholders that we can use so that there is a line of code that does absolutely nothing that we can still pass through. Again, a very rare thing to see in production code, but while you're developing, some developers like using pass. And there you have it, break, continue, and pass. I'll see you in the next one.